Welcome everybody to another episode of Protect Your Vision. We're your hosts, Matt Vizzy and Tim Vizzy. Today we're highlighting a six foot six, 250 pound tight end. And no, we're not talking about Rob Gronkowski. We're talking about San Diego State's Kahale Waring, who can do this. as well as a six foot three, 225 pound. We're not talking about a middle linebacker. Wide receiver out of Stanford, who led the Pac-12 in touchdowns this season with 14. JJ, our Sega Whiteside. They say iron sharpens iron as man sharpens man. And these two have been grinding together as they prepare for the NFL draft. So, without further ado, we introduce JJ Arcega Whiteside and Kahale Waring. Pro Vision Sports Entertainment. Protect your vision. Yeah. And, and it zooms in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the vision right here. That's the vision. I'm going to call from over there. You guys pick up and be like, oh, Belly, check out yeah, what's up, <laughs> Belly, what's Belly, what's good? Belly, what's good? Appreciate you guys coming on the show. It's an exciting time in both of your lives. I mean, you're gearing up to go live your dream and play in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about where you guys are at. What are you doing right now to get ready for the league? We both have that same work ethic. You know, any free time, any, any chance we get. You know, work on something, working on catching the ball, talking, talking ball, talking anything we need to get better at. You know, we feed off each other a lot. We even have a, we have a whiteboard, whiteboard at home. We just go drop plays, you know, at night before bed and you know, drawing up so, defenses and your favorite play, what you like versus coverage, what are you going to do when it's one eye versus two high, right. different things, you know, just, just getting ready for all the questions the teams are going to ask us. Every day, just kind of find something to get better at. Um, this is something that me and Kahale have uh, really grown fond to is, you know, just picking each other apart and trying to see what we can do better and just, you know, just hit, hit the weight room, hit the field, whatever, to get ready for the next level. I met him just out the blue. I think I met you in the parking lot outside yeah. the agency and, and then, like, I think like an hour later, we might have been throwing the football to each other and just chopping it up, getting to know each other. And then from that, it was... You know, it's just all grind. Like, all right, let's let's go. Like, what, what, how can we get better? What is a normal day like in in the training aspect? We'll wake up early, um, go train for the speed of forty, um, agility, the L cone, the five ten five. Uh, afterwards, we have our like skill positioning work. Yep. Um, so we have Ricky Prohl, like NFL vet, former Panthers coach, Super Bowl champ, right? Super Bowl champ. Yeah. 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 So, a few, or yeah. a few Super Bowls, I think. So we're all we're we're um we're learning from one of the best. Uh, then we're in different lift groups. Okay. So uh, my after that, my day kind of gets a little bit different. I usually you know, hit a film room a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'll go lift, and then afterwards, go back into the film room. The first session is like uh, breaking down coverages for receiver, um, and then memorizing the coverages, uh, knowing why the defense does a certain coverage. And then afterwards, it's breaking down my personal film. All right, why'd you do this here? Why'd you do this there? Like, what could you have done better here? All in all, it's probably like a, from 8 a.m. to about 4 or 5 p.m., give or take. It's a full-time job. It's yeah, a, it, exactly. It, you know, <laughs> even the conversations, you, like you said, you guys have outside, like when you're just hanging afterwards, it's still around football. It's still about how can we get better? You know, what can we work on as a team, really? You know, yeah. you guys are in this thing together, which is really cool. Kahale, I mean, the tight end position, man. I look at somebody like Gronkowski. He's the best. I mean, you're the same yeah. size as him, though, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you could fill that role with, like, the Patriots. Or Dallas loves their tight ends with, like, Jason mm -hmm. Whitman. But those guys were known for not only catching the ball but blocking it. Now, what's your mindset as far as being a pass catcher and your mindset as far as being a blocker? Yeah, you just got to be – you got a mentality of being the meanest guy on the field. You got to get down in the trenches and you got to put your face on people and work up to the second level, hitting backers, you know, going down on DNs. You just gotta have a whole nother mentality. Flip that switch when you when you hit the grass. You know, hit the turf. 
I honestly enjoyed that part. You know, I like yeah. I like flipping that switch. You know, yeah. I like I like going to hitting people, and I'm just trying to work on that every day. I'm on the on the field, so it doesn't get much better than when you get spaced out. You know, out, out to the numbers or in the slot, and you get to run routes on the backers or you know the safety comes down. So. Um, I just think I'm a mismatch against every single person, so Definitely. I'm, I have confidence on, on anybody that tries to line up on me. If it's a corner or safety, you know, I know I'm going to be able to body them. Yep. You know, if it's a backer, I'm going to be running past them, and truthfully, I think that I can run past any of them. So I love it. you got so, you got to have that confidence, and that's good. You're going to the line, you got to know, I'm going to win this battle right here. I'm going to win 100%. my matchup. That's what a lot of the coaches say. Win your matchup. Do yeah. your job. Win Beat your, your guy one-on-one. One. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you, yeah. Even if it's a play that's not even set up for me, I don't even care. I'm trying to win on every single route to give my quarterback a target every, no matter what. Absolutely. I mean, if everyone wins their one-on-one -on -one matchup on the offense, it's, you're going to have success, mm -hmm. right? So that's right. key. Look at the Super Bowl. I mean, Gronkowski makes the big catch at the end of the game right there. Even in the AFC Championship, third and five, Brady puts it up to him. Guy's draped all over him, but he's so big, he's yeah, able yeah. to still like have people hanging on their shoulders and make grabs. Yeah. So Contested. having that size... Right. And having, but also having that finesse in those hands. I right. mean, that's that's. There's not a lot of tight ends that have that, right? No. Nah. So right. that's. That, that, I think that's just a big advantage for yeah. you going in. I mean, being what you're six six, right? Mm -hmm. Six six. Yeah. What two sixty? Two fifty. Six six two fifty. So big, fast, strong. I'm excited to see it, man. I'm yeah. excited to see what goes down. Excited to get started. Yeah. Gronkowski 2.0, baby, coming Gronk at you. Gronk 2.0, <laughs> baby Gronk. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a nickname, baby Gronk. That's a good nickname. Uh, we. You, do you guys have nicknames like that? When I was at Stanford, a common hashtag nickname that they came was our Segatron. Okay. Our Segatron. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Love it. A big, bigger receiver. Uh, I like to like the snag. Snag balls come down with it. So, yeah, it's, it's just something that we had rolling. Okay. So let's get that flash up on the screen right there. Hashtag our Segatron. Every time JJ scores a touchdown this year, we want everybody posting our Segatron and giving them love, all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Post it. Our Sega Tron. It's gotta be like a robotic voice too. Our Sega Tron. Sega -tron. You know what I mean? Right. It comes up on the big, on the big jumbo Tron. Even a robot like maybe pop it up. <laughs> you had a good one for Kahale. All right, Kahale. Uh, tell me what you think. Kahale Luya. Sure. I'm with that. You know I what like I mean? Like, like, like can it. you do it in a high voice like Kahale Luya? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Imagine that over like the the jumbotron of the whole stadium. You know? Everybody's singing it. Saving the day. Hey, saving the day. Hallelujah. Saving the day. Saving the game. Making the big catch. Like and we're playing I think on Sundays. Yeah. 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 We're playing on Sundays. And we're, we're playing, playing on Sundays. Sundays. Have faith in Kah Kahalleluya. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we're sir. making these official right now. Kahalleluya and our Segatron. Be on the look, Rose. Those are going to be all over social media for the next decade or two. Let's go. Who are some of the guys you guys uh, watch film on? Who are you trying to model your game after? Who are you study? But the guys that I'm really trying to learn from are Keenan Allen and Mike Thomas. Um, for one, Keenan Allen is just very, you know, he's very quick. He's tall. He's a tall guy, but right. he's very quick. Great footwork. Uh, releases. Like, nobody can jam him up. And even after the catch, he's catching a ball, and then he's trying to, you know, he's trying to score, score every time. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. and that's how I kind of have my mentality, is every time I catch the ball, I want to score, because there's no telling when I'm going to get the ball again, so make the most of what you got. That's what's up, man. And uh, Mike it. Thomas is just smooth. You know, he's not the fastest, he's not the quickest. He's got great hands, he catches everything. Right. And runs great routes, and he's just smooth. You right. know, in, in and out of routes. Um, and that's just something that, that he, should, he can control, is how smooth he can be on the football field and that's something that I'm just trying to you know pick up on and see how he does it. My favorite person right now to watch is actually someone JJ might actually know, uh, Zach Ertz. He went to Stanford as well. Oh cool. Um, cool. He's, he's my favorite player to watch right now. He's a guy that never takes a single playoff from, I've gone through and watched all the different players, you know all the top tight ends and this man like does not take a single playoff, you know yeah. is in the right position at all, at all times, catches everything, you know. Yeah. Reads coverage great, so um, just I just try to watch every single thing he does from his footwork to how he catches the ball to where he positions himself. So right, yeah, it's my favorite guy to watch. And Zach Ertz just broke the record for catches for a tight end in the NFL. He had the most catches ever for a tight end in the league last year, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a good guy to be watching film on, right? Great guy. Yeah, he would come back in off season, and we would talk a lot. Um, great guy. Uh, he, you know, you could just tell just by his personality, he works hard. He doesn't have to be at, at the weight room on his off season, but like, I think. Like right after the season, he was just there. You know, all throughout the summer, he was just there. So he comes back to Stanford and actually works out. Yeah, works cool. out. That's goes cool. up to the field, runs. You know, and he's talking to us. You know, we're 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 college students. You know, it's just 
you know, playing ball and he's right. like chopping it up with everybody, everybody mm -hmm. he sees. He right. came up and introduced himself to me. I'm like, I already know who you are. But, yeah, right, right. <laughs> but like, that's just the kind of guy that he is. So yeah. to see that kind of guy and to see what he's done, you know, it just speaks volume of on the kind of person and player that, that he is. The definition of paying it forward, right? So it's like you learn from somebody that's done it before, then you go and do it and you help somebody that, that maybe you go back to Stanford, you go back to SDSU and help a younger player that's trying, you know what I mean? Or just yeah. give them some mentorship or even just work out with them or something. Yeah. Something that motivates them, right? It's inspiring to see somebody that's done it before, right? Oh yeah, no, for sure. And Andrew Luck is another guy that's like that. He comes by all the time and you know, I, I say probably like 80% of the conversations we had is outside of football. And like, he'll just make jokes because he was like, hey, when are you, when you going to catch a ball that's not a fade ball? And I'm like, wow, <laughs> this guy is really like watching watching our games, watching yeah, our yeah, games, yeah. you know? And like, that's just something that hopefully when I get to the level that these guys are at, that I can come back to Stanford and do the same and, you know, have that same feeling or give that same feeling to their to those guys that I, that those guys gave to me. Definitely, man. Um, so yeah, like those those guys those guys are great guys to learn from and, and just be around. What's your vision as you go into the league? Like, what what is it that you you're envisioning for yourself as you enter the NFL? It's just uh, just to be the best man that I can be and have as much success as that I can that I can have, you know, in the NFL. Um, because you can only control what you can control about, mm. like what you do every day. And so that's preparing for each day and just making yourself better better as a man and as a player every day. And uh, I think the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just curious to see how things work out, you know? I love that. So taking it a day at a time and just making sure you're putting yeah. the preparation and winning mm -hmm. each day. Yeah. Because if you win each day, you're going to win the longer. Yeah. 1% one, one better. That's all you need, right? 1% yeah. 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 better each day. Keep building upon it. Yeah. yeah. We had a sign at Stanford in our um, practice fields that said, you either getting worse or you're getting better, but you mm. never stay the same. Mm. Yeah, and that was something that, that our coach really challenged us every day was, did you get better today or did you get worse? Because one thing for sure is that you're not the same person you was yesterday. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I so love that. It's literally like, sure. even if it's 0.01%, right. getting better. One of my good friends, he always says, get moving or get moved on. You yeah, know? yeah. True. It's like someone else is going to be grinding too. So it's like to take that attitude and that perspective each through each day, it's like, you can, it really does. It, that's what it does. It puts things in perspective. Like, exactly. It's like I got to get after it today because exactly. someone else, someone else is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, okay. it, and it really like you leave practice really thinking like, did I get better today? If you didn't, you have time to you know get better. Go in the weight room, ask the coach. All right, what can I do to get better today? Yeah. Or you know, go go and watch some film. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. it really just implants that in your mind that to the point where if right before you go to bed, you gotta go to bed knowing that you got better today yeah, or no else you gotta make something happen. I like what you said <laughs> though about um, like asking a coach how you can get better every day. Like that's a good mindset to have, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, nobody knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like you ask the right people, like what can I do to get better today? You're asking like mentors, asking people that ha have been in these situations. I think that's mm -hmm. a really good mindset to have because you wanna learn. And people that watch you, you know, people that you're around every day because they see things and, and you know, yeah. you don't know everything. So if you can just if you can just ask and just listen to what they have to say, definitely. You know, and always just take it into consideration. It won't hurt. Be right, because they, they've been observing you, right? Like yeah. you said, they've been observing you. They've been seeing like the work you put in. It can be coaches. It can be your family. It can be your parents. You know, Man. it can be anybody that's that you're around all, like all the time. Like, show yeah. with JJ every day. Yeah. I love to ask. You know what he sees in me, and I'll tell him what I see in him. I can tell you guys are both mentally prepared. Yeah. For this journey that you're about to go on right now. The mental is just as big as the physical, right? Right. Oh, yeah. It says 90% mental. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, like something that I've learned going through this uh, training is the athleticism does not vary much. Like there might be some mm. guys that are just freakish athletes, but there's a few guys like that out there. And between me and the next guy, is really that much of a difference. It's all between the ears. Man. It's all between the ears. That's wisdom right there. Yeah. Because, yeah, the, it's so close, right? Everybody's so close in the league. Yeah, yeah. and you mentioned it before. Like, you got to have that confidence knowing that when you step up to the line, you're going to win. Mm -hmm. You're going to win your rep. Every time. Because well, that guy is just as much athletic right. as you are. He knows. Just He's watched probably as much film as you have. Yeah. But if you know that you're going to beat him, then you've already won. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. and that and that stems from confidence is confidence. Knowing that you put in the work every single day, knowing that you put in the effort, mm -hmm. that's going to give you that confidence. That when you do line up, you 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 already know, I'm ready for this. Yeah, I'm ready to rock. Exactly. So, JJ, same question, man. What what is your vision? Um, yeah, kind of backtracking off of what Kahale said. You know, just being the best man, the best player um, that I can be, um, and just kind of adding on to that. Uh, you know. Just being that, that great example for, for kids, 
you know, out there in the country that don't want to play football. Um, because I know when I was little, I looked up to a lot of guys. And right. now that I'm kind of following in their footsteps, I know there's kids out there that want to follow in mine and, and the Kahale's and everybody else is doing this. Mm. Um, and I want to be that guy that Definitely. they say, this is, the, this is the player I want to be. Mm. Um, so just being, you know, a great example to the community and also just growing as a man, as a player, um, learning from everybody that I can mm -hmm. um, and knowing that once I come out of this game that I know I gave everything I got. What comes with it though, there's gonna be a lot of noise, a lot of distractions, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, like social media with how big it is today. You, and you got fans that'll be like saying things, there gonna be some negativity, that, you know what I mean? There's just some negative people out there. So how do you plan on protecting your vision? I try not to listen to noise, you know, only only hear what the coaches are saying to you, only, only hear what the people that you love are saying to you, you know? blocking out, you don't look at Twitter, you don't look at Instagram, you know, the things that people are comment, commenting on and stuff. Um, you know, you just kind of, you just kind of have your vision and, and you know where you're headed and you know what you're working towards mm -hmm. and you only, you only, you keep like, only so much between your ears, you know, mm. only what matters. And like, just going off of that, like just having that confidence because like, if somebody that's sitting on their couch watching football every day can, can have a, an opinion on you and it's up to you whether you believe in it or not right. but if mm -hmm. you have confidence you know that whatever he says doesn't matter then you know you're gonna be fine absolutely like, there's gonna be a lot of guys that are gonna try to bring you down mm -hmm. there's not enough guys trying to bring you up so mm -hmm. the only person that can really uh help you is you yeah. you know and that's, absolutely, that's yeah. how you just kind of protect that because if you draw that bubble and just keep all that stuff away then it's only going to help. It only helps you. You got to know who you are, right? Yeah. No matter what, you got to know who you are, and you got to stay strong in that, right? Exactly. And it, and just let the work speak for itself. Exactly. I love it. Yeah, and you're not going to please everybody. You're mm. not going to make everybody happy. Your game right. ain't going to, you know, your the fans can enjoy it or not enjoy it, you know. And I hope they all enjoy it, but I already know there's some that are not, um, mm. and I'm not doing it to get a, a acceptance or of anybody's opinion. I'm doing it because I love to play football. Man. First rounders, in my opinion, both of them. <laughs> First up. rounders, in my opinion, man. They got the mindset, they got, they got the work ethic, and they, they got the skill. So, I really appreciate it. Yeah, That's absolutely, man. I believe in both of you guys, man. That's inspiring for us just to hear. And it's good to know. It's good to know that you guys want to not only go succeed, but just be better people, right? It's mm -hmm. like I love how both of you said that. You want to be better men. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You want to inspire the youth. It's a domino effect on what it does for the world, mm -hmm. right? Because being an athlete, you're a role model, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sports has such a big effect on the world. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Especially on kids and how yeah. they come up. What you do with your career can literally steer what thousands, millions of kids can do with their whole lives, right? Because mm -hmm. they grew up watching you or they're mm -hmm. a fan, right? You interact with them. Yeah, exactly. Totally inspiring, you know? I never, I never would have thought I would have been here. Like, I always wanted to. Like, it's always been a dream of mine. But, you know, you look online, the statistics are like less than 5% of people that play football yeah. are going to be in this position. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, I got to do whatever I can to make the most of it. And yeah. I'm not gonna let anybody bring it down because if I made it this far, I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. and no matter what anybody else says, mm. you know? So it's, you know, it's just living in a moment. And I just feel, feeling blessed. I'm just doing what I gotta 